What's up, motherfuckers? Agent Matt Hat here. Wishing you a very fond and happy Christmas Eve, Yule, Solstice, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, wintry, fun time, Krampus invading and taking bad kids to their inevitable demise on this Christmas Yuletide Eve. So as amidst, I do my traditional video tradition and take my inaugural sip of this amazingly disgusting yet surprisingly effective 40 ounce. that maybe it was a necessary component of the Christmas holidays getting Yeti for the holidays with my Christmas pants on that I that I stole from my wonderful girlfriend Gabs who is the reason for me being happy in 2020, the only really good thing that has happened to me in 2020. So, as I do this 2020 rant, in which that is what I will be doing, a rant on this whole fucking year, because it's been one of the most chaotic years in recent memory, maybe the chaotic most chaotic year that any of us have ever had the pleasure or displeasure of living through. It has been one ridiculous, crazy ass, fucked up year for everyone. The kind of year that you could read any news headline from any source and believe it no matter how out of whack and crazy it is. Oh, giant spiders discovered in, in New Zealand with radioactive fangs that are going to take over the whole world and turn you into zombies. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can believe it. I can believe it. But I felt that it, at this time, it is perfectly appropriate of a time to do a rant about all the atrocities, disappointments, cataclysmic, cultural, political, and otherwise significant occurrences that have happened in this most chaotic of years. So we'll begin with a few highlights and maybe go into some uh, detailed analysis or just insane rantings while you can hear people in my house watching TV, yelling at each other. But let's go into detailed things. Let's 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 take an overview of 2020. So obviously to my mind the three biggest stories of this year have been obviously COVID nineteen, including our country's extremely abysmal response to this virus, the twenty twenty election and the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and the subsequent reaction which included some of the biggest most prolific civil rights protests in the history of our country. Also we've had things like fires in widespread wildfires in California and Australia so effective invasion of murder hornets and some very significant deaths of adored public figures, including but not limited to Kobe Bryant, Neil Peart, one of the greatest fucking drummers of all time, Charlie Daniels, Eddie Van Halen, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, God fucking damn that one hurt, Hal Ketchum, which is uh, actually one of my favorite country singers, Lil Richard, Pat Patterson, God fucking damn it, Pat Patterson. Regis Philbin didn't care for him too much. Kenny Rogers didn't care for him too much. Alex Trebek fucking lost Alex Trebek this year. Sean Connery, god fucking damn it. Bill Withers and over 20, 20, 250,000 Americans due to COVID-19.
other things that have been significant this year are the passing of the first stimulus bill known as the CARES Act, which was basically instituted corporate socialism, um, consolidated power to the super rich, gave a four trillion dollar giveaway to the super rich and corporations with a one-time $1,200 stimulus check for American families. Wow. Thank you so much, you fucking assholes. But not included in any of these stimulus negotiations. No Medicare for all. No recurring payments. No universal basic income. With also the right-wing media and Donald Trump consistently downplaying the severity of this virus. In the 2020 elections, the Democrats completely botched their down ballot performance. They lost seats in the House, so far have failed to overtake the Senate. Their chances of overtaking the Senate by even a slim majority hinges on two runoff elections in Georgia with John Ossoff and uh, Kelly Loeffler hoping to oust uh, David B. Perdue and Raphael Warnock. Trump and um, obviously lost the 2020 election. Sorry for anybody that's a Trump supporter that happens to watch this video. I'm sorry, but he fucking lost. He lost the popular vote. He lost the electoral college. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. I'm sorry. Wasn't a damn thing we could do about it in 2016 when Hillary Clinton lost. Even though she won the popular vote, she lost the electoral college, and there was not a damn thing we could do about it. Sorry, Trump supporters. Not a damn thing you can do about it, so shut the fuck up and accept it. And with all these election fraud antics, you have this motherfucking crazy conspiracy bitch, Sidney Powell, claiming that the Dominion voting machines were injected with Joe Biden votes by the ghost of Hugo Chavez that took votes overseas and were hacked by Venezuelan operatives and Antifa and, and the ghost of Che Guevara and the socialist Antifa radical secret network of insane socialists. I don't know. I don't really don't even know. Um, again, the Senate runoffs with Kelly Loeffler and John Perdue, John Perdue, David Perdue facing off against John Ossoff and, and Raphael Warnock. Um, one of my favorite moments of this whole year was watching the debate between Loeffler and Warnock where her fucking brain broke down. And she kept referring to every fuck every question that was asked of her. Radical liberal, radical liberal, radical liberal. Raphael Warnock. He called the police thugs and gangsters. He has advocated for defund the police. He wants to advocate for socialism. He's a radical liberal. He be 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 he be be. Fucking the same stupid ass right wing talking points over and over. Her brain fucking glitched out on the live TV. You can see it. How anybody could fucking vote for that kind of dysfunctional. It's dysfunctional. It is a dysfunctional brain that is only capable of repeating typical right wing talking points. And even if Warnock was a radical liberal, so what? This person, Kelly Loeffler, has a a mental dysfunction where that she can only p repeat the same exact phrases. Watch the debate. She repeats the exact same phrases verbatim over and over and over. And but of course, <coughs> excuse me. You had the Democratic primary, which was one of the biggest disappointments of the year for me because in the beginning, in January, February, it seemed as if Bernie Sanders was the clear front runner. He won the popular vote in Iowa despite some fishy, suspicious antics concerning this voting app and 
trying to kind of seemingly kind of rig the election in favor of Pete Buttigieg, but yet he won the Iowa caucus by popular vote. He won New Hampshire, even though it was by a slim majority, he still won New Hampshire, and he fucking crushed in Nevada. But, Joe Biden made a comeback in South Carolina, and even though Joe Biden had done an abysmal performance in the first three primaries, his win in South Carolina propelled him. Everyone in the media gave this signaling of the comeback kid, the rising of the phoenix from the ashes, the the electable candidate. Everybody got permission to vote for Joe Biden because, see, he was he was considered before a single vote was cast to be the inevitable pick, the electable one, the one that could beat Trump. But yet, in the first three primaries, he did an abysmal performance. But yet. When he did that win in South Carolina, all the media rallied around him. And even though Bernie was projected to do all these wins on Super Tuesday, what happened is Obama reportedly made some phone calls. And the more moderate candidates, such as Buttigieg and Klobuchar, dropped out right before Super Tuesday, making it a race basically between Biden and and Bernie, and this coalescing of establishment candidates behind one moderate pick, one inevitable electable pick, really was extremely effective. Joe Biden swept Super Tuesday, he swept Super Tuesday 2.0, and Bernie capitulated, gave up his momentum, did not extract any concessions from Joe Biden, and Joe Biden became the nominee in one of the most disappointing fucking displays of establishment fuckery in recent memory. Also, if you look at Biden's, Biden's had a million gaffes in this election cycle. He coasted into the the, the presidency by sheer virtue of the fact that Donald Trump is completely incompetent sociopath piece of shit that totally botched the response to COVID, totally was ineffective in controlling the virus, lied, is on the record as lying. He told Bob Woodward, it's an airborne virus, it's much more dangerous than the flu. Meanwhile, his public messaging was, this is just the flu, more people die of the flu every year. It's going to go away with the warmer weather, but yet he did not formulate anything resembling a national plan. He botched the response to COVID, and as a result, Joe Biden could go out there and tell stories about a bad dude named Corn Pop and children when he was a lifeguard in a pool, kids rubbing on his hairy legs, and, 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 and videos of him sniffing underage people's hair and being a creepy fucking pervert and rape accusations and all this shit, but yet he can still win the election by virtue of just being marginally better than Donald Trump, who's a complete fucking psychotic train wreck of a candidate. Another thing was one of my favorite candidates in the beginning of the Dem primary was Tulsi Gabbard, who who spouted anti-war war rhetoric, non-interventionism, um, um, pulling us out of wasteful regime change wars and spending that taxpayer money back at home where it's sorely needed. But yet, she had such a tremendously horrible fall from grace. And she backs off the Medicare for all. And she, in recent weeks, in her last few weeks in Congress, she introduces this extremely transphobic legislation to bar trans women from competing in women's sports events because this was the original intent of Title IX and because she has drunk the Kool-Aid about trans women having an advantage over cis women and it's fucking disgusting and it's complete bullshit and it's her transformation and her unveiling into being you know 
I felt such hostility towards people like Anna Kasparian and Emma Viglin for calling her out for not being a, a real progressive, but yet it turns out they were completely correct, and she has shown her true colors of not being a real progressive and of, of bowing down to this extremely transphobic worldview, and it's fucking so disappointing for somebody that I honestly idolized for part of the Democratic primary. She was my second choice behind Bernie Sanders. What a fucking disgrace. And then, of course, you have Ben Shapiro and his response to the Cardi B song WAP. If you have not seen it, I would highly recommend that you go and watch this fucking train wreck of a video. There's a million remixes of it, but basically, he, he in his squeaky, fast-talking voice, talks about how vulgar these lyrics are, and he recites some of the lyrics, and is, oh, oh. Mm, it's fucking hysterical. It's it's fucking hysterical. And so he's like in his little his little Ben Shapiro voice. These lyrics are such horrible lyrics. Yeah, you effing with some wet ass p word. P word is um 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 female genitalia. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top and I want to ride. I do a kegel but it's inside. Fucking fucking great. Meanwhile, also, we have a literal neo-Nazi and a direct QAnon believer elected to Congress. I'm not kidding. I'm not bullshitting. This happened. Also, also, Mitch McConnell is a fucking sociopath. He's a complete ghoul. Also, 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 the Democrats are useless. Also, also, Elizabeth Warren smeared Bernie as a sexist. Also, 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 Trump has consistently made a fool of himself. Also, Newsmax and OAN sycophantically deny reality. And there's people called anti maskers. Fucking. This video is 17 minutes long already, and I haven't even. Here's my response and my reaction to 2020. Because we've had COVID raging across the country and our what we have seen unfolding in this country in 2020 is the fall of the American empire. And as much as I've advocated and as much as I have looked forward to this empire and this system breaking down and falling apart and unraveling, it is genuinely disheartening to watch the fact that as a virus, a deadly, contagious virus rages throughout the country, the only response we got was a thing called the CARES Act, which was basically corporate socialism. This was... 500 billion dollars to corporations which basically that is incredibly misleading because this number can be through some financial fuckery that I don't truly understand can be leveraged up to 4.4 trillion that was given to the richest 1% of the country while the rest of us were given crumbs Nothing but the little crumbs drop a crumb that was even too small for a fucking mouse as it says in the Grinch movie This was a complete failure by our government to do any Meaningful response to this virus so you can bitch and moan about Donald Trump Downplaying the virus and I think this is a very warranted response But yet you can't bitch about Donald Trump without bitching at the Democrats like Nancy Pelosi who goes on late-night TV flaunting her two twelve thousand dollar Fucking refrigerator stocked full of the most expensive ice cream you can buy and acting like a complete freaking elitist you can't 
to talk about Trump without talking about Mitch McConnell, who is willing to watch people literally die, who blocks anything the Democrats do on basic principle because he's a frigging nightmarish sociopath. You can't. You, Ruth Bader Ginsburg wasn't even cold in her grave when they decided to try to appoint this Amy Coney Barrett giving the conservatives a 6-3 majority and still with that 6-3 majority they tossed out this Texas lawsuit to try and overturn the election. Even Trump appointed judges realized that these lawsuits about <laughs> from the very beginning our response to COVID was worse than any other country. We're number one in the world in mortality from COVID-19. We have had the worst most horrible response to this pandemic, even worse than some third world countries. We are completely useless as a country. Our country is failing at even giving basic health care to its citizens. Our country is failing to respond adequately to a fucking pandemic and it's disgraceful and it's disgusting. I need another fucking sip. I'm so fucking angry. I listen to that and my nephew yelling about phone charges. Another good, th there's some good things to happen in 2020. We got Among Us, we got the song WAP, we got some incredible heavy metal albums, we got, we got fucking munchies that are still on the shelves. Can't believe they haven't been, out been outlawed yet. Young fucking munchies. There's no end to this crazy shit. So maybe we should talk about the huge civil rights protests that have been going on in our country. So I'm not going to go ahead and look up the complete date, but over the summer, a man named George Floyd was brutally murdered by Derek Chauvin, who, who jabbed a knee in his neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds while he is begging and pleading I can't breathe crying for his dead mother and this fucking sociopath cop is telling him to just calm down and just relax while four other cops three or four other cops are, are kneeling on his back they compressing his chest and, and depriving him of oxygen in his lungs and murdering an innocent fucking man maybe not innocent okay maybe oh he had fentanyl in his system Ooh, scary fentanyl drugs in his system why well, you got grifters like Candace fucking Owens saying, I don't support George Floyd. Well, you know, because the black community is making him out as a hero and a saint. Nobody was saying he's a saint. Nobody's saying he's completely innocent. We're saying that this cop, Derek Chauvin, is a fucking murderous sociopath. And when you watch the video, it's one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my fucking life. To watch him kneel on this man's neck and the look on his face looks like he's about to come in his fucking pants from taking another human life this guy should be fucking guillotined I'm speaking metaphorically don't take this video down YouTube for hate speech I'm not hate speeching I am merely over exaggerating an opinion bring back the fucking guillotine for people like this and we've got Donald Trump consistently downplaying this pandemic, saying it will disappear with colder weather. It's no more than a flu. You don't have to wear masks. Masks are ineffective at best. You've got people that when Fauci or public health officials say maybe you shouldn't travel for Thanksgiving, maybe you shouldn't get in enclosed spaces with a bunch of people in your family, maybe you should not travel, and maybe you shouldn't expose yourself. No, this isn't, this isn't health advice, you know, this isn't good faith health advice.
by scientific um, experts and health experts and doctors that have your well-being in mind. This is Antifa terrorist sympathizers trying to trying to cancel Christmas and cancel Thanksgiving because they're radical liberals who want you to suffer, who hate Christmas and Thanksgiving, and who hate anything to do with the holidays inexplicably because they have nothing but the worst of intentions in mind. Our system, is, uh, our system of government is a complete failure and uh, uh, as much as I've always longed to see the day where the American Empire fails and falls and crumbles. I never thought it would be so disheartening. I, I never thought that it would happen like this. I never thought that our government would... would I knew our government was full of sociopaths and liars and, and cheats and corrupt pieces of shit. But I never ever thought that they would just subject their citizens to... to, to a deadly pandemic without offering even even token symbolic aid all they did was a twelve hundred dollar check a few meaningless gestures things that just bare bones response that wasn't severely inadequate putting people at risk people are people are starving people are in bread lines and, and yet these people like Nancy Pelosi have the balls and have the gall and have the, have, have the temerity to get snappy with reporters, to, to, to act offended when somebody challenges them because they have no real response. Our government has had no real response to this pandemic. That doesn't just include Donald Trump. That includes Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell. It's 99% of the Republicans and 99% of the fucking Democrats that have no real response to this pandemic, that have not lifted a finger to help the American citizens make it through the worst crisis that many of us have ever lived through. Not just me as a 32-year-old, but some people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. The worst crisis in our lifetimes, and our government has abandoned us. Not just the, the far right Republicans, not just Donald Trump, a racist, bigoted piece of shit, but also the Democrats, also the establishment Republicans, even some people that are progressives have really not stepped up to the plate and mounted a sufficient attack. It's so disheartening. And, and to top it all off, We've lost some some of the best some of the best musical geniuses. Music is one of the things that, that that gets me through that that gets me through the day is listening to music and we lost Eddie Van Halen, one of the greatest guitarists of all time. We lost Neil Peart, arguably the best drummer to ever get behind a drum kit. People that rely on sports as a distraction. They lost Kobe Bryant, one of the best basketball players to ever shoot a hoop. Let's not even let's let's haven't even mentioned Breonna Taylor yet. An innocent person lost her life because the police it was originally scheduled to be a no-knock warrant, changed at the last minute to a knock-and-announce warrant. Every single witness except one, and even this other witness later recanted that the police did not announce themselves. They busted in with guns blazing, shot this woman dead who had no criminal record. Lost EMT that lost her life over a the botched execution of a search warrant and the police filled out the police report and said there were no major injuries a slap in the face a fucking joke and what and, 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 and you have people like Charlie Kirk who are doing this ridiculous stupid analysis of the whole situation saying that she was involved her ex-boyfriend was a former 
drug dealer and that there were packages being delivered to our house that were suspicious packages. Nothing was ever proved. It was never ever proved that she did anything untoward or wrong or illegal. No basis for claiming that she was involved in any type of crime. A completely innocent woman that lost her life because the police are fucking lunatic pieces of shit. Look at some of Donald Trump's interviews where he takes no responsibility for the nearly 300,000 Americans that have lost their fucking lives. He can't even have the, the, the common decency to, to full-throatedly denounce these white supremacist groups that, 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 that throw their support behind him. He can't denounce QAnon because these are his avid supporters. The fact that in the wake of this election, because Fox News won't deny reality and keep supporting him on his, this, this stupid fucking crusade to overturn the election, even though all the lawsuits have been thrown out except maybe one, that the Electoral College has voted and there is no way to overturn this election and Fox News will not deny reality. So, so Trump supporters are going to far right places like Newsmax and One American News, getting their news from there, these delusional fucktards. That are spewing, that are spewing baseless charges of election fraud and Venezuelan voting machines from Dominion that are that are possessed by the ghost of Hugo Chavez to to inject votes for Joe Biden. There are so many things that I could honestly go on a Twitter. Th I I could book a spot on Newsmax or OAN, go on there, and falsely, with no evidence, claim that I had personally witnessed. North Carolina vote counters um, take boxes of votes and one by one wipe their ass with them, throw them in trash cans while chanting down with America, hail socialism, and I would be revered as a hero because nobody looks for fucking evidence. You've got people that post these memes that Oh, a mask is the new symbol of tyranny. These people are so inconsiderate of other people's lives. They are willing to sacrifice your life, your grandmother's life, your dad's life. They're willing to sacrifice your life. Also, they don't have to wear a fucking piece of cloth over their face. It's fucking despicable and disgusting. Our system of government, our system of democracy has been a complete failure. The American Empire is crawling, like falling apart at the seams, and there's nothing we can do about it. And it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. Do you think Joe Biden has a real plan? Maybe a better plan than Trump, but do you think that there's going to anything's going to come to fruition? This shit is going to get worse and worse because our government has abandoned us. They will not help us. The Democrats want to give us $600 stimulus check when we have not had any relief bill in six to nine months. And all they want to do is this token, this token, meaningless, symbolic gesture of relief when they're giving no real relief to the common, everyday American. All they're doing is a symbolic gesture no, no real substantive help is coming our way. We have been abandoned by our government. We have been let down at every turn. We've had such a botched response to this pandemic, not just by Donald Trump, not just by the Republicans, but every Republican, every single Democrat, except for maybe three or four, maybe ten. Josh Hawley and Bernie Sanders were the only two Congress people that were were substantively and 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 voraciously fighting for a two thousand dollar or a twelve hundred dollar stimulus. Nobody was fighting for recurring payments. Nobody has been out there vociferously advocating for emergency Medicare for all. Nobody. Our leaders have failed us. This has been an abysmal failure of our government to take any meaningful response to the deadliest 
pandemic, the worst crisis in history, the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. There are millions of Americans in bread lines. There are people starving, kids that can't go back to school because our government response has been so botched that we have the worst death rate, even more so than some third world fucking countries because our system is so fucking corrupt that all our government cares about is the richest one percent and they're using this crisis to consolidate wealth and power more so to the one percent it's atrocious and utterly disgusting and I cannot believe that this has been our response in 2020 to the worst crisis since I've been alive that we've completely failed as a nation to help the least of these when we claim to be a Christian nation when our idol the idol of the Republicans and of the religious Democrats is Jesus Christ who said your the way you treat the least of those among you is reflective of how you really feel towards the divine and we have treated the least among us like pieces of fucking garbage our government has neglected us they have failed us they have never come up with a real plan they will not give us real relief they will not pass recurring payments they throw crumbs at the average American and give bailouts to Raytheon. They pass nearly 800 billion fucking dollars for a military budget. They they give four trillion dollars to the richest corporations. They bail out the banks. They bail out corporations. They bail out big businesses but they will not help the average man and woman. They will not help out small businesses. We have a name for people that work in supermarkets, gas stations, factories. We call them essential workers. You know what essential that means? They're necessary. That means our country could not survive. Our country could not run without them. And yet we treat them like sacrificial lambs. We send them into the most dangerous situations and will not support them. We will not give them the necessities they need because our system of government is a failed system of government being held together by glue, bubble gum, and band-aids. And I'm so fucking sick of what's going on in this country and I, I sincerely hope that one day somehow we can build a better nation and build a better future but I don't think it's going to happen what I think is going to happen is this country is going to fall apart into total annihilation and destruction because our government has failed us our system of government has been a complete fucking failure and it's not getting any better Nothing's getting any better. Our government will not mount an adequate response to this COVID threat. It's, it's all been nothing. Fucking nothing. So that's my 40 minute fucking rant on 2020 COVID. Celebrity deaths. Fucking... Christmas Eve mashed potato binging. Munchies. Sipping on 240 ounces while I rant about the government. I might upload this to YouTube. I might not. Whatever. Who cares? Nothing's real. God is dead. Our country has failed us. The end. Peace, motherfuckers.